Well, next I'm going to move on to the resistors here. And uh, as I've said a couple times, it was very nice of Dave to label these for us. You can work through the order in the build of materials. Uh, I've confirmed all the resistors are here. And I'm just going to move through the resistors uh, in the order that I actually picked them up. Uh, kind of your preference. Uh, I am going to work from, at this point, lowest profile components up. So really the connectors will be last. The order will probably be all the resistors. Probably move on to the pin headers up here next. Uh, disc caps, the electrolytics, you know, somewhat in order like that. So uh, let me get a better pair of glasses on here for the work I'm trying to do. So these are 10K. As you can see, it is brown, black, black, red. So that's 10K. Hard working through the camera here. Oh, I forgot on my board. So on the board I'm working on is a, is a beta board. It doesn't have the resistor values in place. So I actually do need to look at the bomb. Myself, on your board, you should see all the resistor values listed directly in the silk screen. Uh, we looked at that in the first video. So I've got a 10K at R5. I'm kind of curious here because there's two in the kit. And R13. So it's R5 and R13 according to the bomb. So let's spot R5 here. Oh, R5 is the one that stands up on its end. And we're going to save that one for later on. And we'll look at that. So R5, and what did I say, R5 and R13? Yeah, R13 is the other 10K. So let's spot R13 on the board here, and it's right there. Let's see if I can get the resistor in. And somewhat do it on camera. Tip. And let's see about soldering these. Not sure how good a solder job I'm getting there. Because again, I'm working somewhat blind here, honestly. Yeah, those look okay. You want to keep the lead from flying. So I've got my thumb over it. First joint could have been better, but it is what it is. We've got here the 806. Colors are a bit hard to see there. Uh, I see gray as the first band, black, and then blue. So that's 806. There's three of these. We know they go over near the VGA connector. They're part of that uh, basically digital analog converter. Actually, I think I shouldn't have bent that as wide as I did. Let me find out what positions these go into. Eight oh six is our six eight ten.
me see if I've got the orientation correct. R8. And R10. Like I say, on your silk screen, it'll say 806 inside of the outline of the resistor to make it a little easier for you to assemble. Probably going to get my head in the way of the upper camera, but such is life. That's why we're doing this with dual cameras. Oops. Eight hundred and six ohms are in. Let's move on to the four hundred and fives, I believe they are. Four oh five. See if I can actually see the color band. So to the right, there's a yellow that barely shows up, black and a green, that's 405. Yes, so I know that those are the other three here as part of the VGA stuff, but I'll go ahead and check the bomb anyhow. And we can see here. That the, that the 405s are R7, 9, and 11. The part positions will be identical on your board. Like I said, just the silk screen has been updated. A little bit fiddly here, working around the camera and with inadequate glasses. But I know, stop complaining. I'm doing this video for you guys. Hopefully, it'll help somebody out there assemble their VT132. You know, if it helps one or two people actually have successful power ups, because a tip or two I provided helped it is well worth the effort appreciate you guys appreciate the views apparently I can't talk while I'm soldering because I'm completely focused on soldering as I should be take breaks don't try to do this board in one marathon session. I just re-soldered a joint I'd already soldered. I uh, did all the surface mount yesterday. And I've edited down the video from that. Caught a couple of misspeaks in it. I've added some notes. That video will get posted here before long. So there's those. Like I say, I've spread it over a couple of days, so 2K. Let's see, let me get it around here so it starts to the right. So the right, you see the red, which is 2, black, black, brown. So that is 2K. Let's see where the 2Ks go. K or R3 and R4. If I remember these were pretty tight. You really want the leads bent tight up against the package to fit in well. Same thing here again. I'm going to bend the leaf. 
lead very tight up against the package. R3, R4. Considering what I'm looking at is completely out of focus, I'm looking around the camera with the glasses I have on. I'm not too unhappy with my ability to solder like that. See, I will inspect this closer after I get the video shot, because I can see some a couple of joints I am going to want to touch up, I believe. We move on to two more resistors which are the 120 ohm should be a brown red black black and that's what we see there one two zero zero 120 ohms uh, these are the four band color codes and not the three band that i'm more used to working with uh, there are two different markings for resistors this four band and the three band so there's 120 ohms at r1 and r2 so really depending on uh, which standard the resistors follow, that's R1 and R2, ultimately it just ends up being a resistance. I'm more traditionally used to using or thinking in the three band color coding scheme. Uh, either one is a valid scheme. Of course, it just depends on which standard was followed when the color bands were printed on the resistors. We should have cleaned the tip off there. actually sliding the side cutters down the lead until I feel it touch the top of the solder joint and then making the cut. I believe there's the, I think it's a 4.7K. You spin it around here so the color coding's to the right. We see a yellow, violet, black, brown, it may be kind of hard to see there. The brown and black aren't well differentiated, but it's yellow, violet, black, brown. That's 4.7K. Uh, there's only two resistors left on the board. So 4.7K must be that R12 there. Let's take a look. Yep, 4.7K R12. Oops, I just dropped the uh, bomb on the floor. I think I've kind of screwed up the orientation of these. I always try to keep them the same orientation. And I think my inability to see super well has got them kind of some up and some down. Not that it matters, resistors are not a polarized component. They can go in either direction. I'm going to stand up here and check the other camera. I 
think I'm going to go ahead and do R5 here next. So R5 mounts different. All the resistors so far have laid down horizontally. R5 is up here. You can see R5, you can see a little uh, solder pad with a circle around it. The body of the resistor is going to go on that circle and it's going to stand up off the board and have the lead bend around and through the other hole here. So to prep the resistor, I'm going to take one of the leads and I'm just going to bend it all the way around the body until I end up with the two leads essentially like so. Oh, it's hard working in the camera. I'm going to take the long lead and I'm going to put it into the hole that's got the circle around it that kind of says, hey, the body goes here. I'm going to pull a little bit on that second lead to remove as much height from this as I can. I'm going to solder up one lead. And just kind of make sure it's standing up somewhat square. It is, it's not too bad. Used to be really common to see resistors mounted this way, it's not as common anymore. But in this case, it was just a space requirement that led to it. Probably should have done C1 and C2 first. They'll be a little harder to get in there at this point. But uh, let's go ahead and pick those guys up. I'm going to move on to these two disc caps next. So C1 is the 104. It's marked 104. It's 100 nanofarad or 0.1 microfarad. So one of these two is going to be labeled 104. Let's see if I can figure out which one it is here. Yeah, 104. So you can see that. And the 104 goes to C1 which is over here. Yeah, that means this one must be the 105. And it is. I'm just going to double check in the bomb. C2 is the 1 microfarad, 105. I'm going to drop him in the leads a bit. I want to kind of gently solder this. I don't want to toss all that resistor around too much that's with the vertical mounting. Well, I'm somewhat off camera. Apologies. Now these capacitors have a little stiffer steel lead than the resistor, so you definitely want to keep the lead from flying up. Wear safety glasses. I'm wearing glasses. I always put my thumb over the lead when I trim it, and that keeps the lead from flying across the room. But you don't want a lead to shoot off and hit you in the eye. Uh, in the face is bad enough. You know, think safety. I'd rather finish the kit than go to the hospital. Uh, I think with that in place, I will move on to the transistor. There's only the one. Assuming I can find it here. There it is. So as we've looked at before, the transistor has a flat. I'm looking at it from the top here. has a flat. That flat will go to the flat on the silk screen. But you can notice the three pins there on the PC board are offset. They're not in a straight line. But on the transistor, they're in a straight line. Now I typically deal with this is just try to take that center pin here, just flex it out a bit 
to kind of get it into the same footprint. Make it a little bit easier to get started in the board. And just like that, just drop him in. Push him down. Make sure he's square. I've got the flat, as you can see there on the transistor, to the flat in the silk screen. So he's in the correct orientation. I'm going to solder up one lead. I'm going to check him for square again. I'm okay with that. Apologies for being off camera. I keep pulling it closer to my face where I get better focus. These again are pretty stiff leads. Be safe. Making really good progress here. Uh, the dogs are going to join us. Uh, I think at this point, I've really kind of done this out of the order I should have. I shouldn't have put the resistor and the transistor in yet. I should have gone to the headers over here, and I didn't. But such is life. Will he hang in place? No. In this case, I'm going to, need to use a bit of solder to kind of, or not solder, tape, to kind of tack him in place. So this is the FTDI connector, and this is the one for the build-in modem, the Wi-Fi modem. And I'm just going to use a little bit of tape, kind of hold those in place. I'm only going to solder one pin on each. And then I'm going to check them for square. They look like they're pretty square to each other. They're not perfect, but they're good enough. And just solder the rest of the pins. And getting the tip of the pencil as best I can onto the pad and the pin at the same time so that both are being heated directly from the pencil. Got a little kink in the solder. Isn't that fun? Can I get it out? Probably should have done these before that resistor and transistor. It might have worked a little bit better. I'm inspecting these through the camera. Those look okay. We've got the other two right angle ones here. Once I spot them, there's one of them, and there's the other one. And these go in this position here. And what these are used for. So normally in the RC2014, you're going to pick up power off the RC2014 bus down here onto the board. But the FTDI cable can also provide power to the board. And so with this jumper here, if I actually had the, you know, the link over the top of it, I could power the board off the plus 5 here from the FTDI connector. I can do the same thing with the modem connector with this second one over here. Also note that that modem connector isn't an FTDI connector. I think the pinout is a little bit different. So, normally these jumpers are off in operation, they're not needed because you're powered from the RC2014 bus, but if you were using this in like a different system than the RC2014, you might actually need those. Uh, I intend to use this board I'm building right here on an S100 machine. So I will need these most likely. Uh, I haven't quite decided how I'm going to integrate this into the S100 machine yet. sure I'm happy with how those lined up. I am most certainly not. Let's see if I can keep from burning myself and get that a little better centered. 
still not happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some jumper links on these to help protect my finger while I'm manipulating them. That way as the pin gets hot as I'm soldering on it, it is not trying to flow up onto my hand. Let's that felt like it's squared up. It looks pretty good. Let's see if we can get this one to move a bit, become square. No, it moved a bit too far. Those are good enough. I'm happy with those. They're good enough. So solder up the other two pins. This would have been easier with the board laying down flush. But it is what it is. I can move on to this header. So what this header controls is the FT or the RC2014 bus has power and it's got receive and transfer. So I so it's this is designed to be used with the SIO2 or the 2SIO. It's the dual UART uh, card that has independent baud rates potentially for each one of the UARTs. And one of those UARTs brings it's transmit receive out on the on the wide bus and then the other one brings it out on, on the, the, the narrower bus up here, the expansion bus. And what these jumpers here do is connect that transmit and receive from the bus to transmit and receive for the, the, the two devices on the uh, ESP32. So in normal operation in an RC2014 all four of these have jumpers on them. Again this is an option to make the board a little more usable in other systems. This so might actually give me a way to connect my uh, in my S100 machine, those two serial ports right onto the board. I could probably just use a, a cable here to bring those on. I'm kind of undecided, like I say, how I'm going to integrate this. We'll see how it looks as we get onto the set of videos where I do that. For now, I'm just trying to get it assembled. Try to hold that somewhat square. Solder one pin. It looks square that way. I got lucky this time and actually, uh, first attempt got it in square. So it doesn't always happen. It rarely actually happens for me. You may have noticed I'm not using flux here. The flux core solder I'm using has sufficient flux to take care of the needs here. I'd only add extra flux honestly here if I had a problem. Oops, I just bumped the camera. So getting down to the end game here, we've got three electrolytic capacitors. 